I'm fucking itching. <laughs> I'm itching. Itchin'. 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 You see this shit? You see this shit? <laughs> like for me so I can get some some skincare treatment. I need some money. <laughs> Please. Get this man some skincare treatment. Yo, how you living? How you feeling? How you doing? This is First Choice Fantasy. We are back today with our betting series that we have continuing. Um, today we're kind of switching things up because we don't want to take time and go through each game because it's kind of boring. Sometimes you don't have talking points. So today we're just going to do three of our locks, three of our danger zone games where we stay away from in terms of money line spread and over-unders. And then we have the uh, over-unders, three each for each uh, person. Cam's not here today, but I do have his picks to say. So uh, I guess we'll just dive right into it. <laughs> starting, on in. starting off with the, uh, the, I guess, the locks. Yeah, start the locks. Uh, you can go first. Um, do you want to just go one, two, three, name them all, or go one uh, If we one have one. any in common, you can go one by one. Uh, first one, I think is my biggest lock of the week, is the Titans money line. Against the Texans, which is currently sitting at minus one eighty six, um, bit of a shocker last game for the Titans. Well, it was last night, Tuesday night football. Lost fifty dollars on that piece of game, but yeah, go ahead. I mean, I took the Bills spread. I thought that game was going to be a little closer than it was. Titans came out and absolutely blew them out the water. Um, didn't expect that at all. But going into this week's matchup against the Texans, Texans are one and four. Um, I think the Titans are going to come out and blow the Texans out of the water. Derrick Henry's going to shove every single one of that Texans defender. Yeah, John Coleman like a child. He got <laughs> He's going to toss ragged. him around like some children. Uh, Ryan Tannehill looked real good last night, too. Yeah. Um, this Titans team could be for real. They only had A.J. Brown last night, too, and some dude named Nick Westbrook. I don't even know what his other part of his last name was, but it was something uh, I can't pronounce. So it was a... Uh, yeah, I like that pick. I was thinking about going with the Titans as well for one of my locks, but uh, since you picked them, I guess I'll just not have them this time around. <laughs> uh, I guess I'll go with Cam's first lock, which is the Washington spread of plus two and a half against the Giants. He doesn't really have much of an explanation, but I don't agree with that. I in don't the, particularly in agree the least. with that one either. Yeah, um, uh, I think the Giants get their first win this week. Same. They went toe to toe with the Cowboys. Obviously, that Cowboys even defense. Struggles, but the Washington football team does not have the weapons the Cowboys do on offense. Exactly. Um, they don't really have a whole lot of weapons at all. Pretty terrible team overall. Pretty terrible time. football team. If besides, you ask me. besides, yeah, football team. <laughs> besides the defensive line, I guess their defense is pretty bad. Besides the defensive line, obviously, but the defensive line is solid. But I have the Giants spread as my first lock, so me and Cam's first locks contradict each other. So uh, go with whoever you are most confident in, in your Cam. Um, I don't really have much to say about it. I literally just said the Washington defense pretty bad besides defensive line. The Giants finally looked like they hit their stride last week. Uh, Devonta Freeman looked pretty decent. Darius Slayton's a stud. We know he this. Is. We know this. Evan and, Ingram uh, showed up finally as well. He did, yeah. They were getting a little creative with that end around with fucking Evan Ingram. It's weird, but I can dig it. Whatever I can dig works, it. I guess. Exactly, whatever works. And the uh, Giants spread is going to work this week for me. Just watch it. You can go to your second one. Um... I have the Packers spread against the Buccaneers. It's currently sitting at minus two and a half. Um, Packers offense is just something special this year right now. Really Aaron Jones really. is really something special this year. Rodgers is playing some great football. Um, this could be also a real high-scoring game. Um, the Buccaneers offense, I think, is going to be a little streaky right now. It's starting yeah. to hear. Tom Brady's – he didn't quite know what down it was at the end of the uh, game four. against the – four. It was a bit lost. Um, dementia could be setting in. <laughs> it could be setting in. It's a little bit. <laughs> That's a bit of a tweak, but um, Packers also are four and zero against the spread this year. Um, I think that's going to continue. I can see them winning by a little bit more than a field goal in this game, but um, I think the Buccaneers do have a good offense. I think this or good defense. I think this could be another high-scoring game as well. Probably one of the best games this week, in all honesty. 
yeah. watch or viewing purposes. Entertaining for sure. I think it comes in a close second against the uh, Kansas City and Buffalo this week, and that's a pretty beautiful matchup. That should be a good game as well. All right, uh, second lock for Cam would be the Pittsburgh Steelers spread of minus three and a half against the um, who are they playing again? Browns. Browns. Yeah, uh, I'm not too fond of this game as a whole because I could see it going either way. Um, I don't really have much words on Cam's lock of Obviously, Pittsburgh. Obviously, I'd like to see the Steelers taking away this one, but I mean, I could really see them losing to the Browns. We usually split them with the Browns. Yeah. And we have, especially coming back from last year's shenanigans with Miles Garrett and all that stuff, this would be also another interesting game to watch just for temper-wise. Yeah. To be some angry players out there on that field. Steelers are at home as well, so that's uh, I guess it's worth a note somewhat. All right, um, my second lock would be the Ravens minus seven and a half against my Philadelphia Eagles. Uh, that's a safe pick. It's I feel like as an Eagles fan, I don't want to say it's a safe pick, but it definitely is a safe pick. I mean, we looked amazing last week against the Steelers uh, at times, even though Claypool let up, we let Claypool get four touchdowns. Of all the wide receivers, Claypool. Um, but yeah, so Claypool got four, four touchdowns. Yeah, if Fogum looked like he found stride, I don't know if he's all that great, but well, I think the Steelers, yeah, maybe. <laughs> well, I mean, for this game, I think, like I was saying to you earlier, if the Browns can really develop that passing game in this game, I think that would be their key to success winning-wise. I don't think um, Kareem Hunt and Darius Johnson will have huge games. I, mean, yeah. I can see Hunt having a good game. Miles Sanders snapped against the Steelers, which I didn't see that happening. Off of one carry, really. It, that, that carry did boost his production a whole lot. 74-yard rushing touchdown. I'm pretty sure he finished with 80 rushing yards total or something like that. On 10 carries, yeah. So, I mean, they've really inflated his stats in all honesty. I mean, he did have two touchdowns, but one the other one was a red zone touchdown, so it wasn't like he was excelling, I guess. I mean, I don't really see Cream Hunt having a big game against the Steelers, but I agree. I think the uh, Steelers, or the Browns are going to have to develop a passing game that works you were talking about the Eagles and the Ravens. We were talking about the Eagles and the Ravens, yeah. But we'll jump back to the Eagles. Uh, to Travis Fulgham, the fucking stud that he is. Uh, he will probably not have a great game this week. I mean, the Pittsburgh secondary is much worse than the Ravens secondary, and we'll find that out this week, obviously. Fulgham probably puts up, like, two catches for 27 yards. Book it. But, um, yeah, the, the Ravens' offense is just extraordinary. And even though the Steelers', def- uh, Steelers offense isn't extraordinary, they still put up, what was it, 38 on the Eagles? 38 points on the Philadelphia Eagles defense that is improved, which didn't look very improved last week. Um, so, yeah, for that purpose, I'm taking the Ravens minus 7.5 against my Philadelphia Eagles. Book it. Uh, my last lock of the week is hopefully don't cock me Chiefs money line. Again. Because I had a beautiful 12-leg parlay last week, $5 bet. For one thousand four hundred dollar payout, every single thing hit except the Chiefs money line, which was at six twenty last week. Yeah. Out of all the teams to absolutely screw you, you would not think it would be the Chiefs. Yeah. They're not screwing me this week. Um, okay. I think they get it done against the Bills. This should be, as we said earlier, a wild game. Um, as long as the Bills don't come out and perform like they did last night against the Titans. Yeah. Because they were bad last night. They did Very not bad. Look. Josh Allen looked all right. Yeah. Um, so Chiefs here, minus 200, money line. My third lock. Lock it in. Uh, going on to Cam's third selection, uh, his third lock of the week. It's going to be the Detroit Lions money line. Uh, they're minus 190. Is that what they're at one right now? Yes. Minus 190. Um, who are they playing against? Jaguars. Jaguars. Du, 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 du. Jacksonville. In Jacksonville. Huh. I don't know. I can see this is one of those games I can go either way, honestly, because they're both fluky teams. They hit here. They hit there. I think the Lions um, got a better offense. Oh, they do. Yeah, for sure. And DJ Chark might not play as well. So I see the Lions money line. I can see it. I can see it happening. Then again, I can also see the Jaguars money line. Who the fuck knows? Because uh, they looked kind of poopy last week against the Texans. Yeah. Uh, Lions are coming off of a bye week. You never really know how bye weeks help teams or not. But that is actually some pretty good odds, minus one ninety for the Lions money line. If I had money, hit three and a half too. Really? Yeah. And it's in Jacksonville. That is that's bonkers. Huh. 
Yeah, I'd probably bet. I'd probably bet if I had money. Don't have any more money because the bills cucked me. Uh, if I had any more money, I would bet it on the Lions money line. It's actually pretty, like pretty nice. Well. I like it now. I'm thinking about it. Yeah, I like it a lot. Um, that was Cam's third lock. Lock that one in, as all three of us agree on that one. But my third lock of the week is going to be the Cincinnati Bengals plus eight against the Colts. Uh, Philip Rivers has been struggling really bad. He's really bad. He is really bad. To actually contemplate benching <laughs> He's him. really bad. He's really bad. Just know it. This is, you notice it. You've seen it for the past three years. He's bad. He's he passed his to throw it to the other team a little bit more than he likes to throw it to his own team. Yeah, it's almost like James Winston level, but not to that degree, if you yeah. do it. Yeah. Because James Winston evenly balances out throwing it to the other Literally, team. Literally, yeah. <laughs> and his team. Not so much Phillip Rivers. I think he has like five interceptions maybe and four touchdowns. I might, I might be tweaking on that one. but Hey, don't talk about interceptions. You got Carson Wentz. And Carson there. Wentz is bad. I know this. <laughs> and we have nobody to throw it to, so he'd rather throw it to the cornerbacks, I guess. I don't know. But I like the uh, Bengals offense. Um, though they didn't look good at all against the Ravens defense. I did I mean, say Ravens earlier. Are a, bitter, a bit of a different team than the Colts. Well, the Colts defense is also pretty solid. But the Colts offense is a lot worse than the Ravens offense, which is obvious. And... Um, for that purpose, I see the Bengals coming within eight points. I mean, I can see them hitting hitting a couple touchdowns. Um, the Colts struggling a little bit. It's going to be probably a low-scoring game, but I see the Bengals possibly winning or just yeah, the losing by seven. Yeah, forty-six and a half right now. So oh yeah, that's fair. It's like Vegas is already thinking that it's not going to be a super high-scoring game. So that's forty-six and a half. So you take that divided by two is twenty-three. Forget the decimals, and then you divide the spread by two. And give the Colts four and take so you put four on top of twenty three, take four away from twenty three, so it's twenty seven to nineteen is what they're saying about the uh, Colts Bengals game. I don't see that happening. The Colts are not putting up twenty seven points. Washington put forty points up. It's just a cock me, just a cock me. All right. That's just our luck, you know how it is. Our luck with our locks. All right. Moving forward, we'll get into the danger zone. We got the danger zone. We got three matchups that we are not going to touch from the spread purposes, from the uh, money line purposes, and over under. Uh, Xavier, you can dive in yours. Uh, actually, my first one was the Bengals Colts one, mm. just because I was looking at that game earlier a little bit today. Um, this one, like we were just talking about, I feel like you like the Colts, you like the Bengals spread. Mm. Me particularly, I'm sticking away from this game because originally going in, I liked the Colts winning this game, but then like part of me thinking like, you know, Joe Burrow comes out. Start slinging. Start slinging. I don't know. Particularly, I don't like this game. I'm sticking away from it. That's fair. I mean, if I didn't... I mean, I had the Cincinnati Bengals spread that I had for a lock. It was one of my last locks that I made, obviously. But it was one of those things I threw in there because I had the Jets spread at one point until Sam Darnold got announced out. And uh, I felt like the Cincy spread compared to other games that I'm going to get into... It was an accurate one, I guess, for that purpose. I don't really know. It is pretty risky, though, because I could definitely see the Colts just shutting the Bengals out and it being, like, 10-3 to 3 or some shit. What was the final like, score of that Ravens-Bengals game? It was, like, 27-3, maybe? Something like that? Yeah. I don't know. They got, wa- they got washed. They got very yeah. washed. But, um, yeah, okay. Moving on to Cam's first danger zone game. It is Chicago-Carolina. I am not in agreement with this uh, from an over-under perspective because, as we'll see later, I'll talk about that. But... Money line is spread. I can see it happening because I'm pretty sure Carolina's favorite, aren't they? Mm-hmm. Minus two and a half or something like that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's that is pretty scary. Um, I can definitely see the Bears' defense just shutting out Carolina offense. Then again, um, the Bears just beat the Buccaneers last week, which is yeah shocked me. Shocking. Um, Panthers are on a bit of a win streak right now. They, they won three straight. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. That offense has been looking pretty fucking good, like, in all honesty. Especially without Christian good. McCaffrey, it's been looking oh, yeah. a lot better than I thought. I don't think McCaffrey's playing this week either, so that's uh, it's bad for them, but it's good for me because I'm playing, uh, <laughs> playing somebody who has them. So, um, Carolina's defense is also pretty abysmal, so I can see Nick Foles just putting on his golden shoes with his, with his uh, emerald shoelaces and strapping on and just, you know, just going crazy this week. I don't know why his shoelaces were emerald, but <laughs> it is what it is. Um, that was Chicago versus Carolina as Cam's first danger zone game. Um, my first danger zone game is Cleveland at Pittsburgh. Um, That's also my, one of my danger zone games. That was one of yours, sorry. So we share one, Cleveland and uh, Pittsburgh. I don't really, I don't know. I can see that going either way. I like could you really said, see this game going either way. Like we you touched said, on this a little bit before. Yeah, right? yeah. 
You said the uh, the Bengals, not the Bengals. The Browns needed to develop a passing game that's really going to work because that's where the secondary or that's, that's where the Steelers', weakness, Steelers right? weakness right there. But I mean, their the strong suit. Be great as quarterback to be getting that yeah, passing game going. Though. But they do have OBJ weeks. and they do have Jar- Jarvis Landry, who aren't any slouches at wide receiver. Yeah, but they do excel in the running game, so that's usually what they really go to immediately. I'm not saying Kevin Stefanski can't change his game plan or whatnot, but I mean I don't. I don't know. I could see the Steelers winning this. I could still see Kevin Stefanski being a fucking genius and just going out there and putting up 30 on the Steelers and Steelers struggling. But uh, I the can't. Can also get, I think the key to this game in general is going to be the passing game. For both sides, for yeah. For both sides. For sure. If he's the one who can get the passing game going, because the Browns, I think, have been pretty decent against the run. Not 100% yeah, yeah. sure. And the Steelers haven't really been that great running the ball. Mm-hmm. Uh, but throwing-wise, Big Ben's been looking pretty nice. I got hella weapons at wide receiver. I can see James Washington deep ball. I can just see it happening because Andrew Sandejo is terrible. Every single coverage. one of these weeks, it's going to be a different wide receiver for the Steelers. Oh yeah, one hundred percent. Last week was Chase Claypool. This week it's going to be probably James Washington. No, I can see James Johnson. Washington. See or it could be like an Eric Ebron snap. Who knows? Yeah, we don't I'm, know. I'm sticking away from this game too. Yeah. Because I don't like the vibes. Browns Very could win. Risky. Steelers could win. I don't like it. Don't like it. Divisional yeah. matchup too, so it's kind of scary. Like you said, they usually split. We don't know which one they're going to split. Uh, if they're going to take this one, they're going to take the next one. So I'm sticking away from that game for all purposes. Uh, do you want to go for your third one, or do you want to just... Uh, my third one, I was a little iffy on this one, but I think it's going to be the Broncos-Patriots. Um, I don't really know who all has COVID and doesn't have COVID. For the yeah. Patriots. Like, is Cam Newton going to be playing? He should be. Yeah, he should be like playing. Weeks. Gilmore probably won't be there. <laughs> But now Melvin Gordon just got arrested last night, so that's gonna yeah. who knows if that's gonna really impact the Broncos if he's gonna be playing or not gonna be playing. Of course, person I play who has McCaffrey also has Phil Lindsay, and if Melvin Gordon doesn't play and Phil Lindsay does, I'm just gonna get annoyed. But go ahead. Um, yeah, if, if Cam Newton's playing, I guess this could be a lot more easier pick for the Patriots. Yeah. Because uh, he obviously brings a whole lot of different offensive options to the table than Brian Hoyer or no, Jared Sidham. So. Um, I guess there's a lot of questions leading up to this game, too, because it got, was supposed to happen this past week. didn't happen. Um, overall, I'm just sticking away from it. If I really wanted to be... Uh, I mean, the Patriots are 10-point favorites going into yeah, this game so that, already. That is husky. So, But I can see the Patriots' money line hitting. Like, if I were to make another lock instead of the Cincy lock, I would have the Patriots' money line. But because I don't want to take the easy way out of minus 420... I'm just going to not have that, and I will just not have this. This is, I guess you can call it a danger zone, because I'm not taking any picks from it, if that's the case, if it's not a money line pick for the Patriots. But, yeah, I can take it. All right, uh, Cam's second danger zone uh, matchup is going to be the Monday night matchup. The Cardinals at the uh, Dallas Cowboys. Um, Yeah, I don't... I really don't know how it's going to go. I think, actually... Yeah, me and Cam share this one. I, 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 what the fuck am I tweaking for? <laughs> I also have the uh, Cardinals and the Cowboys as my danger zone matchup, number two. Um, I just, it's a Monday night game, so like, it's going to be so much attention on it, and it could be just like this Tuesday night game where you think that the Bills win or you think that the Cowboys win just because, you know, their offense has been hitting on all cylinders and obviously they still won last night or whatever the fuck they played so without I, Dak Prescott. That's a devastating injury for that Cowboys offense. That was gross, too. It was really gross. devastating to watch, devastating for Dak. Grossly, yeah. Especially for that offense. He was a key part of that offense. But Andy Dalton stepping in, I don't think, is a terrible replacement. It's not, but... I mean, they still have hella weapons on that offense, so it's not like he's... He obviously doesn't bring the amount of skill that Dak Prescott does to the exactly, table. He's yeah. not mobile like Dak Prescott is. Um, probably still that's they throwing the ball. They still got Zeke, so like they can still Zeke's carries are probably going to go up a little bit more now. You'd think. The offensive line also is uh, pretty banged up too. Frederick Frederick was uh, retired in the yeah, offseason. Uh, Tyron Smith Tyron season. Smith, yeah. yeah. So that's uh, I don't know. That <laughs> team are getting more and more questionable as the years going on from yeah. week to week. Very questionable. So I mean, I could but see the Cardinals either are also happening. questionable. Like, yeah. They're coming off a win last yeah. week against the. Jets, Jets, yeah, 30 10. Which they didn't cuck us. They didn't. I rolled with the Cardinals. 
I did too in the parlay that the Chiefs cucked me. Chiefs, but, yeah. unbelievable cuck of the year. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. Never would have seen that coming. <laughs> Unbelievable. <laughs> All right. Uh, yeah, I don't like this matchup one bit. It could go either way. Lord knows what's going to happen. Uh, game number three for the danger zone for Cam is the Bengals and the Colts. That was one of mine as well. It was. Yeah, you did. Yeah. Um, it was. I don't really have any words on this besides the fact that I had the Cincy spread, so I wouldn't call it a danger zone game. But I probably said something about not liking the game because either or could happen, but. I don't know. I don't know if it's that dangerous in my eyes, I guess. But I guess I'll say my third matchup. That is a danger zone matchup. And surprised it didn't come up. It's the Rams and the 49ers. So what is the spread right now? I think it's three and a half. Mm-hmm. Three and a half. I'm not liking that one bit. It's three and a half for the Rams. And the Rams are at uh, San Fran. 49ers just, I don't know if they're just missing something right now. I mean, obviously they're missing the entire defense, but... Mm-hmm. Their offense is just looking poop. Like, Garoppolo comes out. They definitely like, rushed that game. I mean, I didn't rush a whole lot of that game yeah. besides the scoreboard. And it was yeah, all same. Dolphins. Um, so, if Garoppolo maybe comes back a little bit more healthier for this game, it might be a little different. But maybe that's also one that I might stick away from as well. I, mean, so. I kind of like the Rams spread, but yeah, because I think they will probably win this game. By how much? I don't know. They should win this game, I think. They're the better team. Yeah. This offense kind of reminds me of, obviously not layout-wise, but like with the quarterback just struggle and you don't really know what's happening in Washington. Because like Dwayne Haskins is some stomach, stomach illness. Uh, Jimmy Garoppolo is doing something that is not right, I guess. I don't fucking know. It just, it's just weird. I never thought that he was that great of a quarterback oh, to same, begin with. same. But it was stability. He it was got stability. Big money. The 49ers saw something in him. Made it to the Super Bowl last year with him, so he must he be did. somewhat talented. I just think. Uh, I think their defense helped carry them a lot to that Super Bowl. Oh, yeah, for sure. Which now that defense is on the IR. Yeah, literally, the entire defense on the IR. All right. Uh, does that. I think that marks up. Yeah, that marks up the mm-hmm. danger zone matchups. Uh, moving forward, we're going to go into the over unders for this week. Uh, three three for each person. X, you can start. My first one is the Bears-Panthers. I'm taking the over in that game. It's currently sitting at 44. I agree. Which I think is the lowest. Mm. I think it just bu- it just burst it up, too. I think it went up to 45, but it's still an over. It's for still me. one of the lowest. The lowest currently that I saw was the football team in Giants. It's at 43 and a half. So this is one of like, the second lowest ones. I think this yeah. one will be... I'm not going to say high-scoring game because 44 as the over is not that much of a high score. Um, I can see like 27, 20, yeah. 27, 20. It's over 45, yeah. so I mean 44, 45, whatever it's at. That's really not that much of a stretch. The the Panth- the Panthers' defense is bad. We know this. They've allowed so many touchdowns this year. Um, the Bears' defense is good. It's good. But the Panthers' offense is also pretty great as well. So I can see the Panthers' offense putting up some points. The Bears having to put up points, and they're going to put up points with ease against the Panthers' defense. So, I mean... I took the over because yeah. I think it's going to be pretty high scoring. I don't know who's going to come out on top, but uh, yeah, over. Either, honestly. The over is definitely a good bet here. Um, one of the safer ones from this week, honestly. Yeah, I would put it as a lock if we weren't doing spreads and money lines for locks. All right. Um, but I guess I'll go with Cam's first. Cam's first uh, over under lock or bet, whatever the hell you want to call it. He took the Baltimore Ravens and Philadelphia Eagles over 48, which. I don't know, that's a tricky one to me. It's really tricky, because, like, the Eagles are pretty inconsistent, you know what I mean? And, uh... I mean, they did put up some good points on the Steelers, though. They had, what, 29? I hate to say it. I hate to break it to you. I hate to break it to you. I think the Ravens' defense is better than the Steelers right now. I really do. I mean, the secondary is pretty pretty well put together. The front seven may not be as stout as Pittsburgh's, but, I mean, it's still, still relatively I'd stout. i overall, the Ravens' defense is more balanced. Yeah, and the Steelers defense, and it—I mean—it picks up where the Steelers defense lacks with the secondary, secondary, which is where the Eagles excel at. Besides the seventy-four-yard touchdown run, I mean, besides that, they weren't really doing much on the ground. But what they really excelled in was Travis Fulgham just somehow getting open and catching balls. And I don't know if that's going to happen this week. Uh, even if they bring Alshon Jeffrey back, I don't know if that over is really going to hit forty-eight. 
It's risky to me. It's it's one of those danger zone over unders I would probably stay away from. What are your thoughts on it? Um, I don't know. I didn't really look into much of this one. The Ravens obviously I think the Ravens will win, but as far yeah. as like putting up points wise, I think the Ravens will put up I don't know, I this could be a f- the overs at what, forty eight? Yeah. That could be like a it's like a 30-10 game, in all honesty. 30-10 game? Hmm. That wouldn't hit the over, though. That, but yeah, it wouldn't. <laughs> I don't know. I'm sticking away from the over on that one. Yeah. That's all Cam. That's all Cam. Cam, <laughs> you got the Gahonies over here. All right. Um, game two. It's here. I'm taking the under in the Cardinals-Cowboys game. If that's it, now. 55. Fifty-five. I don't. I don't know. I just don't know if there's gonna be a ton of points put up on the board. Yeah. Here, I mean, obviously the Cowboys have a bunch of off- offensive weapons. The Cardinals have an offensive weapons as well. I think D Hop will probably feast. Probably like a thirty-point fantasy game. Yeah, something like that. Um, Kenyon Drake. I would like to say maybe start him this week as well. But really, with Kenyon Drake, you never really. You know. never know. You never know. You never really know. It could be the Chase Edmonds show, or it could just be neither of them showing up to play. Yeah, it's <laughs> just the show or the not show. Or the show or the not show, and um, I'd like to see a little bit more how Andy Dalton operates in this offense. Um, obviously, he's got Amari Cooper. He's got Michael Gallup, C.D. Lamb. Ezekiel Elliott, so the offensive weapons are there, they're plenty, but I think this one will be a little bit more of like a back and forth slugfest type. Yeah. Not a whole lot of points being put up on the board, though. So I'm hitting that under the 55. I can see it happening. I mean, Cardinals offense obviously showed a weakness, what was it, two weeks ago? Mm-hmm. They played... The Lions, right? Yeah. They lost some of that game in the field goal. Yeah, yeah. Their offense looked pretty weak against the Lions defense, and now the Cowboys' defense is not good by any means. Uh, Cardinals have showed their weaknesses, and Cowboys may be able to capitalize on that. Cowboys' offense may not be all that hot either. We really don't know. I guess we'll have to see. Very small sample size uh, last week after Dak got hurt. And, uh, yeah, I'm not really – if I had a bet, I'd probably bet the under. But, I don't know. It's kind of wary. Scary to me. Wary and scary to me. All right. Game two for Cam is the Vikings and the Minnesota. I'm tweaking. The Vikings and the Falcons under of 54 and a half. I also have this uh, uh, the under of 54 and a half for this game. Um, hmm. You said the Falcons Vikings one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. With Dalvin Cook out, I can see. I mean, I don't know if he's gonna be. Out. I thought he was gonna be out. Right? Looking like he's not gonna be playing this game. All right. Uh, that's 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 even scarier. I mean. The offense is going to revolve around Alexander Madison. He looks which good against the Seahawks. He, he looked good. He looked good, but yards. he's no Dalvin Cook. He is you no Dalvin I mean? Cook. He's, there's no Dalvin Cook. Dalvin but Cook's the Falcons' Dalvin defense Cook. also is yeah, it's pretty nobody. Cool. Yeah, it's so, literally nobody. Uh, it's like a bunch of paper cutouts playing on defense that Alexander and Madison will probably run through all of them. And their offense, like the, Vic- the Falcons' offense, hasn't been looking too hot. Obviously, Julio was out last week, which... And the Falcons did just finally fire Dan Quinn as well. That's That's true. I was talking with the dude I work with over down at the gym, and he told me, like, we were talking about the, uh, he said he likes the fact that when coaches get fired, the team acts like they have a fire lit under their ass kind of thing, you know what I mean? Like, you talked about with the Texans last mm-hmm. week, and the Texans came out and blew up, and uh, maybe that happens this week with the uh, Atlanta Falcons, but I don't know. I really don't know. I think it's a little bit of uh, uncertainty, and the offense hasn't looked too hot these past couple weeks, so... With that being in mind, I would say the under for the 54.5 for the Falcons and the Vikings this week. I mean, the Take Vikings that. did actually also come out looking pretty good against the Seahawks. They were leading for a lot of that game. Yeah. Um, but obviously, Russell Wilson did his Russell Wilson things. Russell and Wilson. Won on that. I think it was fourth and goal or something like that. The GOAT! The GOAT. The GOAT! Winning MVP this year, 100%. 100%. I hope so. I really hope so. All right. Um, final game. Third game over under. Um, this one might be a little risky, but I'm taking the under on the Chiefs Bills game at fifty seven and a half. Oh, yeah, that's valid. It could that's be valid. risky because they do yeah. have some high powered offenses. Yeah. But their defenses are also high powered. I it didn't think look this. The Bills yes, defense last did not night look they did not, but they yeah. had a 
think Tredavious White was not playing last night. Oh, I seen he was questionable. I didn't know he didn't play. I thought yeah. I thought I saw on the sleeper app that of uh, the list of the Bills inactives, I think he was one of their inactives. That's right. Um, I could also see maybe the Chiefs blowing the Bills out this game and having a whole lot more points towards the Chiefs side compared to the Bills side, which would obviously probably hit that under. I don't see the Chiefs putting up like, 50 40 points. points or I don't even see them putting up plus 30, in my opinion. Really? I don't think so. I mean, when they played the Chargers, they won what? That was what, 24 24, something like that, going into overtime? Yeah. Um, I could see another like mid 20s type score game here. Um, I'm not sure. This is this also, like I said, it's a bit risky, but sometimes you got to be risky. Sometimes you got to take the risk. Stop being risk averse. Start putting your neck out there. If it gets chopped off, you're dead. What's the, what's the, what's the problem with that? You know what I mean? All right. Uh, going to the third game, I will uh, take the reins real quick. I got uh, duh, 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 the Houston and Tennessee over. So we seen last night uh, Tennessee and well, Tennessee's offense just looked. They put up like six touchdowns. Studly, yeah. So yeah, between Tannehill and Henry, there's six touchdowns Henry had too. Like, what, two. Two rushing touchdowns. And then Tannehill had three passing and one rushing. And what's what's fucking annoying is the fact I was gonna bet on the Ryan Tannehill touchdown. And I didn't. I didn't. You want to know what? You know what? You want to know what killed me? The fact that it's so risky. That's it. That's the only thing. Well, that and the fact that he only had, I think, one rushing touchdown last year, and then one rushing touchdown each year out, like before that. It's like this is not going to be the game that gets one rushing touchdown. You know what I mean? But you know, when I don't bet on it, he gets a rushing touchdown. Regardless. That's usually how it is. You literally, yeah. I'm got to stop betting, but I'm still betting. <laughs> but here we are making videos yeah. for y'all. Uh, Tennessee, Tennessee's offense pretty amazing. Houston's offense looked pretty put together last week. Honestly, Brandon Cooks finally got involved. Um, I don't know about Tennessee's defense. They kind of looked pretty good last night, but I don't know if they're all there yet. You know what I mean? I mean, leading up to last night, they had been pretty putrid against putrid. the run. Yeah. But I mean, then again, the Bills don't have a great rushing offense to begin with. So true. That's not true. A huge, like, sample that we can look at. Yeah. And the Texans don't obviously have a good rushing attack either. David Johnson's been struggling. Um, I see a lot of points getting put up. It's a divisional game, so it could hit the under pretty easily. But I'm going to stick my neck out there, like, again, with another risky risky uh, bet. And I like the over 54.5 just because I feel like the offenses are going to duel. Like, Deshaun Watson's a stud. He's a fucking legend. He needs to get some help. He needs, he, he, needs needs, help. He, he needs help. He needs a player like DeAndre Hopkins. He needs a player like DeAndre Hopkins in that lineup. Wait, he had a player like DeAndre Hopkins. He did Hopkins. at one he point. He had time. DeAndre Hopkins. And some but dude wait. named Bob got him out of there. What happened? Trump, for drunk, for drunk, honestly. But And now that DeAndre Hopkins left, the Texans are sitting here at 1 and 4. Yeah. They're going to be 2 and 4. JK, they're not going to be 2 and 4. Um, but yeah, the over. Big, 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 big scoring game. Probably one of the biggest scoring games this week. Probably not, but I'm going to say probably, so probably not. <laughs> like that one, didn't you? All right. Uh, <laughs> third game. Camp's third game. He has Green Bay and Tampa Bay over 54. I like that as well. Yeah. If yeah. I had a fourth option, I would have written that down as well. Yeah. I, I don't know. I could see it happening, but then again, I could also see Tampa Bay just putting up 17 points. And I don't think the Green Bay is going to put up 37 or 38 while they put up 17, it'd probably be like 31, 17. And then I get to 48. Is I don't Devontae know. Adams going to be back? I fucking hope so, man. He's been out for what, four weeks now? Well, and they just had their bye week last week, so that's an extra he, week for rest for him. He better be there. Aaron Jones will probably be keep on doing Aaron Jones things. Legit. Legitimately. And Chris Godwin might be back, too, I think. Maybe. Maybe I'm tweaking. Maybe I'm not. Maybe Scotty Miller unretires. He put up zero points. Be back as well. Yeah, yeah. Learn from that. Makes me a little weird Ronald fantasy jo- wise because I have both Ronald Jones and Leonard Fournette for some silly reason. Yeah, it was well, that's just me. Silly mistake, silly mistake. I don't know. I think uh, it's possible there could be high scoring games if all the weapons come back for both game or for both teams. So fifty four was it? Fifty four, yeah. yeah. That's valid. Somewhat. Somewhat valid. That was Camp last America's game. Over over. That do you think that is? I don't know. It could be. It could be. Could be. All right. I guess that uh, signs is off, checks the docket, and we're shipped, if that makes any sense, bro. Sometimes I just speak gibberish, and if you don't understand it, that's just your fault. Like, you're just at fault yeah, there. Yeah, try living with the man. 
He doesn't live with me, bro. I live by myself like an animal. All right. Uh, we're signing off. Like, comment, share, subscribe. Tell your cat to subscribe. Tell your grandma. To tell your step aunt's uncle to subscribe because he would love watching this shit. Adios.